Boom. Let's go. Let's go. Hello everyone, I hope you're having a fantastic day. In this video, I'm going to show you how to properly build one of the strangest yet fascinating weapons you can find in Shadow of the Earth Tree. The ancient Meteoric Orc Razor is a devastating colossal sword that offers a remarkable performance on multiple scenarios and a very unique combat style. It looks very similar to the Maliket's Black Blade, but thankfully it doesn't feature holy damage and it feels a little bit smoother and easier to use. This amazing weapon can be found quite early in the DLC, which means you can enjoy it before facing any difficult target. It is very suitable for every type of play style and it will remain effective no matter if you use it in the earliest areas or if you take it straight to Radan. Despite of being a little bit difficult to build, with the right configuration it will deal a huge amount of damage to every type of enemy. First of all, I'm going over the main features of the weapon, I will explain the details of the build, then I'm going to test it against the most difficult bosses of the DLC and the base game and I will show you how you can obtain this weapon quickly. So without anything further to say, let's make this meteorite crash! If you don't want to farm runes or materials for your Elden Ring builds, MMOEXP is the best web service where you can easily acquire as much runes and items as you wish for the best price. Use my code CARLOSEN to get a 5% discount on your purchases. Thanks MMOEXP for sponsoring today's video. This weapon scales mainly with Strength and Arcane, pretty similar to the Marais Executioner's Sword. Only a few weapons work around these stats simultaneously, which means that the AR of this weapon can be really high if you distribute your stats correctly. Of all the Colossal Swords, this is one of the heaviest you can use. For that reason, it is important to be mindful of your equip load to avoid fat rolling. The Meteoric Blade deals physical and magic damage. Anyways, the magic part of the weapon is so small that it's not worth buffing it with tools like the Magic Scorpion Charm, the Magic Shrouding Tractor, or Terra Magica. Doing this will spend resources of our build unnecessarily and it's not going to be effective. If you are not very good at rolling the attacks of some bosses, this weapon has a great guard boosting, which allows you to perform powerful guard counters. But personally, I prefer rolling and catching targets with the poke attack of the blade. As it deals pierce damage, it's an effective strat against most enemies. A great feature of the Colossal Swords is the huge stance damage they deal with each hit. Working around it looking for a critical hit is highly effective as well. Performing one of these attacks with the stupid AR of the Meteoric Blade will lead us to take chunks of HP from our targets in just an instant. Anyways, what I like the most of this weapon is its unique skill, White Light Charge. A double input swift thrusting attack that travels a long distance to pierce the target to then create a white light explosion that deals a pretty good amount of damage. The power of this skill is directly and only affected by the weapon AR and upgrade level. It deals a really decent stance damage, it's not extremely broken but it does the job and it is actually a very useful skill. I truly enjoy to use this ability against targets that tend to take some distance when being attacked continuously. A clear example of this could be Malenia or Elana. Both bosses have movements that allow them to back up when they are being hit repeatedly. With the white light charge, we can immediately close gaps with targets like these two as soon as they try to run away. This is a great skill to have in a colossal sword, because most of the time this type of weapons will be a little bit difficult to use because of their slow speed. If you combine the basic moveset with the unique skill while fighting, you got yourself an extraordinary weapon that can destroy the toughest enemies easily. The only thing I don't like about this weapon is the magic damage. It is misleading for most people, since they will think of this blade as a magic weapon when it is mostly a pure physical sword with a little bit of extra magic damage. It's like just having your sword buff with magic grease. Out of that and its complicated name, the Ancient Meteoric Orc Razor is an amazing weapon that you can use on the entire game and it will not disappoint you. Those are the main features of this weapon, now let's jump straight into the equipment and the stats. We are going to be using the Ancient Meteoric Orc Razor on plus 10 and any seal we have available to cast our main buffs. I'm going to be using the Theoler's Armor set on its altered version and the Circle of Light merely for aesthetical reasons, so feel free to use a better armor set if you want. Don't worry cause even if this weapon is so heavy, you will have enough endurance to wear a powerful armor set. The most effective talismans for this build are the Axe Talisman, the Two-Handed Sword Talisman, the Shard of Alexander and the Blade of Mercy. In our Flask of Wondrous Physic, we are going to use the Blood Sucking Crack Tear and the Spike Crack Tear. Do not even worry about the Blood Sucking Crack Tear, it is true that it drains your HP but it does it very slowly. Anyways, if you don't really want to use this skill, then I strongly recommend you to switch the Axe Talisman for the Ritual Sword Talisman and the Blood Sucking Crack Tear for the Stone Barb Crack Tear or any other you find useful. This weapon doesn't deal physical damage only but if we pay attention to the stats of the weapon, we will notice that even on plus 10, the magic part of the weapon is basically insignificant. So it's not worth trying to boost this magic part of the weapon even using Hall of Shabriri, cause it will increase the damage we take and to increase only the 25% of this 100 magic damage is not worth it at all. For that reason, I'm going to use 
Blood Bowl Aromatic, but Flame Grand Me Strength is a great alternative as well. Flame Grand Me Strength boosts your physical and fire damage, but in this case it's a great alternative if you don't like crafting or if you don't want to take extra damage. This weapon consumes a decent amount of stamina, so don't forget your Pickle Turtle Legs to boost your stamina regeneration speed. It doesn't matter which version of the Pickle Turtle Leg you choose, both of them are better than nothing. In order to obtain the max performance of this weapon and to have an optimal build, we are going to use 50 on Vigor, 25 on Mind, 40 on Endurance, 72 on Strength, 25 on Fate, and 50 on Arcane. Golden Vow and Flame Grand Me Strength are going to be our main buffs. As you can see, I have my Scattery Blessing on the level 20, and if you want to take this build to the latest part of the DLC, then you should level it up all the way up to 20 as well. Now that we have completed and optimized our build, what do you say if we show some style to the bosses? Okay, Malin, it's over already. Okay, I'll do it again. Nice. That works. Amazing. Where are you going? Nice. Here we go. Amazing! Oh, we did it! Oh, we did it, baby! Let's go! <laughs> Let's go. I'm out of stamina. Amazing. Let's do it. This is ours, guys. Let's go. That's what I'm talking about, baby. <laughs> Amazing. Beautiful. This time I got him. Yeah, this time I got him. Fantastic. Here we go, crazy guys. And we're running, baby. Oh my god. No way, he's fighting. He's the bomb, bro. You are the bomb building beast! Oh, you are the bomb! <laughs> Here we go. Hmm. Check this bad boy. Oh, that was close. Amazing. Please. Nice. Amazing. Here we go crazy, guys. It's time. Boom. Let's get the crit kit. <laughs> we almost didn't get it, bro. But we did. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> no way. 